Welcome back to the 6 inch summer squares series. This is part 4 of 16 where we'll design and make a fused applique block. We'll turn this photo into this block. You can use this pattern found on my website or follow along in the designing process and make your own. Using this technique you can do pets, landscapes, people, and all sorts. This is a quilt I did of my boys a few years ago using basically the same technique but with glue and seven different values instead of interfacing in three different values. But start with the flower if you're new to this technique because there's lots of room for error. Flowers can be anything and any color. The first thing we have to do is turn a photo into a drawing where we can make templates. I did this on my iPad, but you can easily draw the outer lines with a Sharpie and then get as detailed as you like. But once you have your lines, you'll want to assign light, medium, and dark. You can use different colors within each value, but it's just nice to know where your highlights and shadows are. Make sure your design fits into a 6 inch block for this exercise. This would be done on the photo, obviously, before you trace, but it is nice to just see on plain paper. And then you'll want to print out two copies of your drawn design. You'll need a double-sided fusible webbing that has paper on one side. I love this product from Alex Anderson's Quilters Select. It's called Apple Web Plus. You can also use Steam Seam Light and even Heat and Bond. But with Heat and Bond, it's pretty heavy, so try and get the light as we'll be hand stitching around the edges. I think the most confusing thing about fused applique is the reversing. So here are the options. You can work with the template as is, and then just trace them out on the paper side of your interfacing and just have a reverse flower. Or, depending on the interfacing, you can trace the design right on the fusible side and your image will appear as is. Or, what I did here was I reversed the image. I did that in a program, but a lot of times you can reverse the image from your print menu depending on your program. In addition to your two printouts, print one in reverse or you might even be able to copy one in reverse on your copier. But if that's not in your realm, you can just print out a third copy, flip it over, and then trace the lines in a Sharpie on the back. And then you have a reverse image. The tracing is much easier done on a light box, but of course mine happens to be in Denver and I'm in Canyon City, so um, just make sure you have a white background to trace. With a Sharpie, it's pretty easy to see the lines. But here I'm using a piece of paper underneath it all to help with the visual. Here I'm tracing onto the fusible web with a Frixion pen. Once all your lines are traced, go ahead and mark your values, light, medium, and dark. There are two pieces that I'm going to trace outside the design since I'm going to just plop those pieces directly on the top of the others. Much less cumbersome than trying to cut um, these sharp curves. One of your copies you'll use as a reference and then you'll cut out the outline of the other one so that you have a template for placement. Okay, so I've gathered all the purples that I have with me silks and batiks and things that have interest in them but not prints so much you could do prints it's a little trickier but um they definitely will work and so i just took a little snip of all of these fabrics and as i'm looking at them um, i'm also seeing sort of the layers of the rocky mountains and there would be a whole nother quilt and that's how it happens <laughs> as far as the background goes i'm considering two options this lighter one that does have some interest to it it's a batik and it's got a little bit of purple haze going through it and then this green one that has a little bit more purple I'm sort of leaning towards the green one um, but I'm gonna as I start I'll addition both of them on um, the backgrounds and then make a decision but I'm thinking the green as far as the little fuzzy stamen, is that what those are called? Um, the yellow part in the flower, I'm going to do embroidery or just maybe choose a funky yarn. I'll have to look through my yarns to see if I can just stitch something on. So we'll see what happens with that. Okay, let's just start really easy and let's just do this piece here. As far as the order in which to put these on, we're going to do a little bit of tucking. Um, 
when we lay all of this together. Like this piece, I'm gonna put on last because that is like the outer piece. So I know everything is gonna get tucked in here. But doing this piece first will establish at least where we're gonna put the flower. And we can still tuck back in this little place right here. So what I'm gonna do is just cut this section out, the M and the L. I'm using um, serrated scissors. It's super important to cut with really sharp scissors. Don't tell anyone that I'm using this to cut out the paper. A lot of people don't like that. But I really think that the accuracy is amazing when you cut these out. And it also helps with the fraying of the edges of the fabric. We're gonna have the fusible, which of course will greatly help. But I just really like the control of these little Karen K. Buckley Perfect Scissors or anything with a serrated edge is my favorite thing to do this sort of work with. Now, as you can see, I've got three values here, light, medium, and dark, and more than three fabrics. And I think that's just gonna add interest to the flower. So as long as you just put your fabrics in order from value, dark to light, you'll be able to look at your picture, refer to the picture, and decide what color you're gonna put where. So the medium on this little part of the flower is very similar to the medium on the right side of the flower. So I'm gonna start there with this fabric here. This is just sort of my middle of the road silk. So I'm gonna just fuse this on. So this is the paper side that I've drawn and marked on. This is the fusey side. And just take your iron and fuse it, of course, to the back side of the fabric. Make sure you're doing the back side of the fabric. And then this little piece, it's lighter than this, but it's not the lightest light. So I'm gonna do sort of a medium light. So I've got this hand dyed fabric here. And, oh gosh, let's see, maybe here. I used a Frixion pen so you can see all of my marks are erasing. So what we're gonna do is cut this one out all the way around the edge and not leave any space because we're not tucking this under anything. This is gonna lay over everything. So that means we can go ahead and cut it right along the line. So I'll go ahead and do that. Now the light one, when you're looking at your guide and always be looking at your photo too so that you can determine where you want these pieces. This light one here is gonna shove underneath that one. So on that side, I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra on the side of this. So I know that this is, let's just cut a little piece here so you can just cut it all out. This piece will lay like this, and you know that because we're reversing this image, right? So on this side, I'm just gonna leave an eighth of an inch just so I can tuck it under that medium, but I'll cut this flush. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that now. And just a little bit for tucking. And then again, I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of this out on the line and then we'll put it on our fabric and see which background we like best. So I've got my handy little template here so I know where to place all of the outer pieces of the flower. And no one says you have to have it directly in the center. In fact, things are more interesting when they're not. So I think I'm gonna off-center this just a little bit. But you do have to make sure that you're not putting your edges right up against. Remember, we need a quarter of an inch around the whole flower for sewing it into whatever it is we're gonna wanna sew into. 
So this is going to sit here, and this is going to sit here, just tucked under that. And we're just going to take this away and see how we like it on this background. And I like it. It's just fine. Um, I do want to try it on the green because I'm really leaning towards that green. I just am. Now this green has a lot going on, so I have to decide where I want the dark and where I want the light. Now, of course, if I'm looking at the photo, which I always am, I could even just make a block out of both. If you look at the photo, there's a, you know, the tree, this kind of resembles the tree and this resembles the background, which would be awesome. Um, I'm just feeling lazy and I don't want to do it, but I could. So I really want to check this green out, which has the light on this side and the dark on this side. So I'm not even going to use the template. I'm just going to place this on here to see how well I like it. One of the things that's really important is to take a photo of both of them so that you can see it as if you were looking at it on a design wall. Looking at it just straight on is really difficult to tell if you like it. So I'm going to do that with both and then I'll show you and then I will make my decision. Looking at it on the lighter fabric, it definitely pops more. Like the contrast obviously is greater. On the green fabric, I really like it. I just feel like it's a little bit richer. And the other thing about that is if you do something funky that you're not in love with, it's going to blend a little bit better with the background. So the, the kind of the busier background is safer. And I really am obsessed with this fabric. So this is my choice, the green. Okay, so now the fun part. We're going to commit. So I've got my template on. I've got the fabric oriented how I want. I want this darker side over here, that purple to reflect up on the flower. And I'm away from my edge so that when I put my quarter of an inch up here, I'm down a little bit. In fact, I might even come down just a little bit more. So we've got to peel the paper off. This is always the not so fun part. Make sure that when you have the paper peeled off, you've got the shiny side down. And then we can iron this down. I'll press the iron right here just to tack it in place. And then I'll wait to tuck, to press this part down and this part down until I get this piece in. So I'm gonna remove this. And I know this piece is sticking way out, so nothing is going to go behind there. So just give it a little press just to commit. We'll peel the paper back from this guy. Making sure we don't take the fusible right along with the paper. I've got the fusible here. I'm going to tuck it right under here. Okay, just make sure that this piece isn't extending out past here because this is sort of supposed to be tucked behind. Get that good and nailed down there. So we are going to be stitching every single edge. We just have to in fused applique. So there's a it's a very stark contrast between these two colors here. So what I would do is I'm going to use a thread Probably I'll use DMC one or two strands. Um, this is really thin and really little, so we're going to need a, a tiny needle to not fray these fabrics. So probably one strand, but I'll use a color that's sort of in between these two just to get it to blend uh, better. And as you can see already, the silk just starts to fray, so we'll clean that up a little bit when we stitch on it. So the next thing I want to do is put the stem on. So I go back to my paper and cut out this green and then of course we have a little bit here but we'll wait on that we'll do maybe these three and then pop that seam on so we're not having to like cut that out of the middle and i love this bright i think it's going to really pop against the green because we're putting green on green so let's see we'll probably do this line right there might be really pretty down the center see how that works 
And then of course the stem we're gonna cut right on the line. I am gonna leave just this little tiny bit though up here so that I can tuck it under the flower petal. So go ahead and cut that out. And now we'll know just where the stem is gonna go because we're just gonna put our paper here on this flower. And you can see it's not perfect, but it's okay. You know, we're just going for close here. And then this stem will come up to right about there. You can see that this extends a little bit past that. We're just gonna cut that off. It's just because we moved the flower down, so it's all good. Get the other paper off. Move this down just a little bit so that that little bit of stem extends past that point right there. A little cumbersome. And then careful that you don't press on the part that's coming off because that's going to stick to your surface. And then to accentuate the stem, we'll just use a real bright green. It'd be great. With interfacing, you just want to hold it on there for a few seconds, five seconds or so. Okay, we'll snip that off and then we'll start up the stem on those little dark pieces that are behind. Okay, so the next step is I want to do this little section in here. So let's talk a little bit about color. I have a side and a medium, even though they're a little bit lighter than this medium and the medium that I used. And this one's a little bit lighter. It looks like the sun is hitting this one. And then here's the green stem. So color. I'm kind of thinking, if you look at the photo, they're a little bit lighter, but they're not really light. It's, a, it's like a totally different color. It's kind of like, almost like this color in here. So what I'm gonna do is cut probably somewhere in here, cut the two pieces for these two, and then the light, I'm gonna go ahead and reference this again. As you can see, this is more of a lavender, more on the red side of the purple. And this is more of a lilac, kind of a bluer purple. So um, I've took a little bit of license here. This is obviously not the color that's shown, but it's lighter and I liked the contrast. So, but I, it is important if you're kind of using an oddball color like that to go ahead and reference it again in the flower just so it looks intentional. So I'm definitely going to use that here even though it really isn't the same exact color. Like I'd be searching all day to find the exact color. And besides, it's already beautiful on its own. So maybe I wanna interpret it a little bit differently, which is totally fine. I will probably use that color again, at least one more time. So maybe up in here, maybe on this side here, just so that we, we're, we're getting all different colors of purple in the flower. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut out. I'm just gonna do this as a grouping to start. Is just cut out this section here. So sometimes you'll see applique artists cut out everything and fuse it to everything all at once. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I just feel like I like to do things one at a time so that I can make those little mini decisions on, you know, when and where to talk. Um, to me, that just makes sense. So that's what I do. Besides, I know myself and I will lose these little pieces if I cut them out too far in advance. But everybody, each to their own, all of that. But here, I mean, even with these four, we could get them all confused. So I'm going to just put them in order in which I'm going to stack them. So we'll cut out the little green stem here. And then of course, that's why we keep our drawing so we can refer to that once all these pieces are cut out. That goes on the top. Cut that little tag off there. So it's gonna go something like that. So when I cut out this piece, I'm gonna leave a little bit extra on the top right here to tuck under this piece. Then that piece will lay on top. I'm gonna leave a little extra on this piece so that I can put this light over it. And then the green stem will go on top of all of those. So that means I will have to leave a little bit here 
and here. So if I go back to my template here, of course I'm showing you this backwards because these pieces are upside down. Let's just start with this guy right there. I'm gonna carefully move these over to the side so I know what piece is what. And we're just, you know, when you're faced with a big project, it's just best to take things one step at a time, just like anything. So then it doesn't seem quite so overwhelming. So the two M pieces I'm going to put on this fabric, maybe right in there. I'll press that one and I'll do the next M piece. Maybe something a little bit different, maybe there. Might even be interesting to have a two-tone, so maybe I'll put it right on the edge of that one. Move this up to where it's a little bit more red. Okay, and I'll press those pieces on. And for now, I'm just gonna cut around them. Try not to do too much pre-thinking, just cut around them for now. Make sure that the templates are good and stuck on there. And then we'll go ahead and deal with these two pieces before we do the light and the green. So this is my first piece that will go right there. The only thing, if I'm looking at my template, that I'm going to need to get tucked under is that piece there and that piece there. This whole outer part is gonna sit on the outside so I'm okay to cut right along that line. So it'll look like this. Then that piece will sit right there. Whoop. Sure you're sticking with your template plan. Then this piece, I'm gonna cut all that on the line because that's the outer part. So I know that for sure. We're gonna take it real slow. The top of it gets cut to the line, but here is where we're tucking under. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra on all these sides for tucking. So let's put these two on. So I'm pretty comfortable with this. Peel the paper off, set that in place. And then of course, you know, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Like you can kind of maneuver around. All right, and then take the paper off of this. Carefully remove your template away and then you can go ahead and press those two in place. A little bit lighter, we're gonna reference that color again and maybe go there. And just cut around it to start just so you have a more manageable piece to think through. So this piece here, I'm looking at my photo and that is on the outside. So that I'm gonna cut flush to the template. The rest of it is going to lay underneath the stem, this flower, and the flower coming above, the petal coming above. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra right here, here, and there. Peel the paper back, kind of guess a little bit, then go ahead and put your template back on just to make sure everybody's existing just where they're supposed to be. So you can kind of see that that's gonna get tucked under there. This is sitting over here and I've got a nice place for the stem to go right there. So I'm gonna hold that in place, take this away. Give it a good press. You will find that Fusible doesn't love sticking to silks as much as it does cotton. So if, you, if you're if you finding these are flipping up, 
um, and it's driving you nutty, just throw a little tiny bit of Roxanne's glue baste it or some sort of fabric glue under there and you'll be fine. And then the stem, this teeny tiny little guy, we're gonna put on the brightest part of this green. That piece out so we can think it through without all this extra fabric in our way. So when we're looking at our photo, the curved side of the stem is gonna be tucked under the main petal, that big petal that's coming out. And this flat side is gonna lay on top, but this side is gonna get tucked under. So what we're gonna do is cut and leave the space on the curved side. And then this flat side, we're gonna cut flush to the template. I'm gonna press that again, cause it's so little. And then before you peel the paper back off anything, just make sure you let it cool. That fusible is gonna wanna lift up with the rest of it. So we just need to make it, let it cool for a minute. Peel that carefully back. This is like surgeon work, isn't it? So clearly we don't have a place here. This, the template is really more for the outer part of the flower, but that is okay. We kind of know if you just look at it, we've tucked under here. We're gonna match that to this edge so that we can lay that piece right over this whole thing. And that big flower is gonna come around and cover all of this anyway. So, you know, just do your best to try to line it up. And then you can just give this all a really, really, really good press. And remember, we're gonna be stitching on it. So any, if you, you know, have any little spaces, it's not the end of the world because, remember, we used a busier background and you know what? This is our artwork, so we're not going for perfection. We're going for super fun. I love that this is referencing this. I like that this is referencing this. So I think it's gonna be a really cool block. I'm really excited about it. So now, um, let's see. I think what I'm gonna do, so I think you guys get the idea, is I'm gonna do a few more pieces and I'll do a little slideshow to our uh, Greasy Wheels music. I edit these videos in iMovie and they give you these choices, these tune choices. And uh, here in Canyon, it just seems to be the best music because there's a lot of good old boys and a lot of big trucks and a lot of mechanics. So that's just the nature of the thing. But I think what makes sense um, is to do this section next. So what I'm gonna do is take my scissor, I'm gonna cut out all of these right here, all the way up to the M. In fact, I'll just do that now, just so you can see what section I'm gonna work on next. Irises have a frilly little edge, so we're gonna kind of reference that. Oopsie, I forgot the M. I gotta go back for him. And then this little section in here, if you look at the photo, um, we're gonna do that embroidery or that yarn over that. So uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do an M and this tiny little D. I might just do this whole thing dark and then the yellow will show up a little bit better on that. So let me cut this little guy out right here. And as you can see, I'm like not a perfectionist, so I obviously I clearly didn't get it on the line perfectly, but it's our flower. We can do whatever we want, right? So this, I'm gonna build all the way up the side here, like that, just like I did here. So I will do that and I will give you a little slideshow with the Greasy Wheels music provided by iMovie.
Okay, and here is my finished, almost finished, iris. And I'm pretty pleased with it. You know, it's got a lot of different colors, a lot of good contrast. I like the background. And it'll look even better once we get to stitching. So we'll start with the stem. There's a couple different options, of course. The main thing is you want to have a super sharp needle, as small as you can manage and very, very sharp um, because we're gonna be piercing a lot of these fabrics. Um, anything that's lifting up a little bit, just throw in a little bit of glue on the sides just to keep the pieces down. You saw in the video, I added a couple little pieces um, just for some more contrast. So right here, this light was blending into this, so I just cut this. I didn't even make a template. I just cut this out and popped that on there. And then same with here. This was just a big stark piece and I just wanted some light shining on that. So we'll start with the stem and we're gonna do a blanket stitch. Now you could just do little whip stitches and then run a, a bigger yarn in here to couch, kind of like you'd stitch first and then just weave the yarn in to couch it. But I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it simple for this one and just do a blanket because there's already a lot going on. So I have a few different threads here. DMC Floss is my favorite. I've got a couple multicolors. This one's a silk that I can pull apart. I'm not even sure if that's gonna fit in my needle, but if not, I've got these as well, and I'll find some purple DMC, but this is just what I pulled. I don't have any novelty yarns, meaning like the hairy yarns with me, so I'm gonna use this to stitch um, into here, and I'm gonna use a bigger needle for that, but for, for nailing these edges down, we wanna stay really simple and really little and with one strand of DMC floss or even Aurifil, just sewing thread, whatever you have. When you stitch, like say I'm gonna stitch this green and I'm gonna go ahead and show you that in a minute, but I'm only gonna stitch this edge of the green. So anything that's laying over, I will do the blanket stitch. So he, this edge, this edge, and this edge. This edge I'm gonna use, this is the one that's laying over so I would use the purple to stitch over this edge because I want this to appear where it's gonna stick up. Really important up in here where this petal here is on top of everything. We wanna make sure that we stitch along this edge and that'll make that puff up a little bit more and make it look like the piece is kind of folding over. So there's a lot you can do with the thread to make it a, a look a little bit more finished. So I will pull a piece of the green, this bright green, and then pull it apart so that I just have one thread. I love DMC floss because it's just so inexpensive. It comes in a million colors, and I find myself just using this as sewing thread anymore. And then of course you'll knot the one end. And when you're doing the blanket stitch, you wanna come up just on the edge, so I'm not piercing the applique, just on the edge through the background. And I'm gonna keep these stitches really close because I want a definitive line. So all you're gonna do is an eighth of an inch away and, an, and a really close, like a sixteenth of an inch down. Of course, you can vary this. Just put it into the applique and then exit out at the edge there. Make sure that your thread is behind the needle when you pull it out. And then that leaves you with an outline on the applique and these little stitches. So again, it's just in And back out. Of course you can do this on the machine. This is called the blanket stitch. It's also called the buttonhole stitch. A lot of people what they'll do if they're machine stitching this, they'll do a zigzag. You can even do a satin stitch. Just work up the stem into the applique and out the edge. 
Now clearly this is a Netflix binge worthy activity. It's very easy, it's very relaxing, it's very time consuming. When you finish with a line of applique, when you do your very last stitch, just pop it back into the fabric over your outline And then I'm just going to continue right up this side here. So I'm going to come out right the green. And then just, an, just one important thing to note is make sure that your needle is perpendicular to your line. So don't angle it this way or your stitches will be angled. And that's fine, but what I would do is angle all of them, <laughs> you know. Um, you just want to pick away and stay consistent, but I generally just pop it out perpendicular and then just keep running up this line here. And just watch your spacing. Get it as close as you can. This is where you want your really sharp needle because I've got two layers of applique now that I'm going through and interfacing which is why I want to stay really light with the interfacing. Okay, so once I stitch all the way up here, I'm going to pop it back down in here, and then I'll just come down and stitch on the outside, and then I'll be finished with the green. And we'll get on to these petals. I found this uh, thread. It's Sulky 12 weight, which is a little bit heavier than one strand of GMC, but not much, so I can still use a teeny tiny little sharp needle. And use this and I'm kind of thinking so I don't even have to think I mean all of the colors that I've used are represented here so I'll, I'll, I'll get my definitive lines around each piece but I'll also get a blend so I think I'm just gonna do every petal in this and just let the colors fall where they may that way I get a little blend here and the light will hit it in different ways on different things and I think it'll just be really interesting to use so as far as my plan of attack um, I think what I'm going to do is the back petals first, get those good and nailed down, and that way when we stitch on top of them, these are all stitched down and, and all of that. So I think that will work really well. So I'll start here, I'll do these back ones, and then I'll probably just come around, maybe I'll swing around here, you know, you just sort of stitch as, as long as you can. So let's just start right here, I'm just going to bring the needle up right on the edge of that applique, once again. Okay, and then just keeping, now I'm on a curve here, so you wanna be careful not to do this. Your needle wants to be perpendicular to the current edge you're working on. So that all your stitches stay nice and straight. This needle is just the tiniest bit bigger, so it's gonna take a little bit of muscle to get that through. And what's cool is that's already starting with sort of that bluer purple. So it's going to bring some of these colors in. So I like that a lot. So it kind of seems like my needle's angled um, if I look at it and compare it to the stitch that I just did previously. But that's just because I'm on a curve. The biggest deal is just to keep your needle straight with the edge that you're currently working on. And then what I do is after each one, I just give it a little pull so that the thread, the outline is nice and tight, not to gather the fabric, but you want it tight so you don't have loose little blanket stitches. Make sure always that your, your thread is behind your needle before you pull it out. Little tug. And that keeps that nice and straight. And I already just love it. I love that extra color. And then pretty soon we'll be having, you know, this color will will pull in. So I'm really excited about that. So I'll just stitch away. I'll take photos and give you another lovely little sideshow because I think you guys probably got the blanket stitch.
Okay, so needless to say, I became obsessed with this sulky um, blendables cotton, this 12 weight thread. It's really fun to just watch the colors land wherever they wanted to and highlight and shade um, around all the different purples. So that was really fun. And these little fuzzy um, flower centers, you can see that they, if you look at the picture, they follow the curve of this center line here and kind of follow the curve here. So what I did was I just took a double strand of DMC multicolor with yellow and orange in it. And then for those brighter little pieces, I've got another color of this sulky 12 weight, which is this lemon yellow. So it's just stab stitches is really it. And it's one of those things where it just adds um, just some interest to the piece. So when I when I have a trail of uh, almost like satin stitching, but it's really not because I'm not going really close. I want it to appear hairy and I want to see those little lines in between. So I'm going to start in the middle of this curve. Um, yeah, that's probably close to the middle. It's kind of like a little mohawk, isn't it? And then not work really close together because again, I want to see the spaces in between. So I'm just working this little stab stitch along this line while I have the yellow going. And then when I get to the orange, I'll probably pop a little bit more in between just up at the top where it's like you can see. And then at the base of it, it's like a really light yellow. It almost looks like white. I'm not going for you know perfection and trying to mimic what it is. I'm just going for a nod to the part of the flower that really makes it so interesting and beautiful. Vary the lengths makes it real interesting too. So your stitches, because we're going around the curve, will be a little bit farther away at the top and closer together along the base. And at the base of it, you can see it's a little bit lighter. So we're just going to work a few strands at the base. And there's a little white line going through the center of it. So what I'm going to do is work a stem stitch. So I'm just picking up a few of the threads that I've already stitched. Always keeping my thread on the left side or the bottom side, however you want to look at it. Just putting that little highlight in there. So that's it for this block. Ooh, that was a lot of work this week, wasn't it? If you're following along, definitely please share your photos and add any of the squares that you're pleased with or that you want to share. I'll add them to the Unity Quilt. It's really fun to watch that grow and I'd love to get your photos in there. So please join Mandala Unplugged and share with the group or send them to me at nittycat at comcast.net. And here are just a couple photos that have come through this week. We've got Sarah's paper piece tree, so cute. I love, love, love the fabric she chose. And Angela did the most adorable owl for her lantern box. In lieu of the butterfly, she decided she wanted to do an owl and her fabric choices are amazing. And it's just, it's such a happy little guy. So I love it. So thanks you guys so much for sharing. We will be doing those squares until mid-October. So there's lots of different things we're going to play with. Um, next week we're going to do embroidery. Um, I have all these great threads with me and colors and beads and I want to play with some lines of embroidery where you know if you're wanting to um, accentuate a line maybe in crazy quilting how we can grow a, a, a line of embroidery out um, just starting with some really basic stitches and then just adding to them. So we'll have some fun with that. So thank you again so, so much for joining me and stitching along with me. And I hope you like this one. This one uh, means a lot to me because this flower was actually growing on the property. Um, out of all this crazy rubble, I popped a couple irises. And my grandma always planted irises, so they remind me of her too. So next week, just grab all of your embroidery threads that you are in love with. Just find a color scheme that you like and grab some different textures and we'll just play. Maybe grab some size 8 seed beads, some 12 seed beads, some crystals, and we'll play with those. 
Thank you again so much. Enjoy your time. Happy stitching. And we'll see you next week. Bye.